Tango with Amy, a show about the world's contemporary tango scene. Today we're on the road in San Francisco, and it will be a very special episode because you'll get to see me, a Korean-American tango pianist, Sumi Lee, perform at an outdoor festival in a virtual Colombia. It'll be a behind-the-scenes look of what it means to be a musician during the pandemic and the coronavirus. I hope you guys will enjoy. Hello! I hope you guys enjoyed all the behind the scenes of our adventures, recording, practicing, going to concerts. Um, and I just wanted to ask Sumi a couple questions about the experience this week. So, um, first of all, what does tango mean to you? Tango, for me, um, it's not only about music, it's uh, a lot of things about life. I think it's about people and different stories, and art, poets, and especially I think it's about more deep down human emotions, sometimes very raw emotions. What are your goals for tango? So for, for me, I'm still learning, I have a long way to go, but ultimate goal is to probably continue um, introducing the new contemporary tango music especially for listening you know for the concerts i want to introduce new pieces and new musicians from around the world in the second one i would do i do want to write my own music and produce uh, incorporating with my background because i'm classically trained pianist so i do want to mix the classical elements 
And I do want to incorporate my root, you know, from Asia. I'm originally from South Korea. I do want to share this knowledge or offer some educational moments for people to understand what tango music is about as well. It's not only for dancing. I do want to spread this gospel about uh, tango music for the concert. But why? Why is, why is this so important to you? Okay. First, because I do want to play. <laughs> 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 no, no, because you know, classical music or even jazz music, there's so many repertoires, and people are very familiar with those pieces. But tango music to perform for the concerts, people are not so aware of that. So I think it's my, I feel like I, it's my mission to bring that from Buenos Aires. We've been talking this weekend about how like the pandemic has change what it be, means to be a musician, where it's not as simple anymore as just being able to practice and play, that you have to learn many techniques. And so if you could share with us, how has your life as a musician changed because of the pandemic? A lot, a lot. I had to be very uh, awake and I had told myself, wake up, I need to focus. So I had to learn a lot of skill sets using cameras and how to position my microphone. I didn't even know there was a, such a thing. I thought that you just put one microphone. I learned a lot. And because we talked about this, um, when you cannot perform, when you cannot play as a musician, if you want to be productive, you start learning how to write. And you put a lot of time studying, studying that you couldn't do before because you were always running around, you're playing. So now I think I'm studying a lot, reading a lot, research, researching a lot, and people became very creative. So it was a silver lining, I think. I have a question for you, Amy. For me? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm always trying to promote these female musicians. So I brought her over here, and as soon as she got here, <laughs> I had to break the bad news. Hey, the San Francisco city is uh, revoking the license permit to have an outdoor performance. So San Francisco International Art Festival might not happen this weekend. And I have to break the news. And I want to know how you felt that. Like, I mean, obviously I was really disappointed. But this pen so today's tango was born out of being at home doing nothing and not wanting to be depressed, really. <laughs> and to highlight these amazing musicians that I've met in my journeys and get to tell their stories. Um, but I was really trying to, you know, focus on my career as a performing musician. And the pandemic hit when I was in Australia. Mm. Before I was going to debut an all-female tango orchestra. And that got canceled. So when I heard that this was going to be canceled, I just felt like, oh, here we go all, all over again. I was very relieved that the, that the city gave the permit to the festival. I was very impressed with their uh, social distancing mm -hmm. protocols, contract, uh, contact tracing. Uh, they really, I think, were a model for how to continue promoting the arts, supporting artists through this very difficult time in a way that people are safe. I, I want to say that the San Francisco International Arts Festival was um, exemplary. You were saying that tango is many things, and f specifically that tango is people. Yes. Yes. So, thinking in those ways, what has this weekend of the two of us running around, playing concerts, and doing videos, and recording in 24 hours, what, what has this experience been? I think... All, everything what we do actually is gonna melt into our sound. So we put so much effort. We, it was a two women show, basically. We struggled. We, did, we couldn't sleep well. We didn't eat because we had to get things done. This outdoor concert, I think it was very, very touching. I mean, as a musician, how can you ask, how can you expect better than you actually sharing your music in live with your audience that close. For me, the 
concert per live per performance is not one way direction for me it's like always two way direction i give them energy they give me the energy it was just so important for me to be around the audience doing all things together so it's like how can how can you say it's like very human and that's the end of season one at today's tango I want to thank all the artists for collaborating and sharing their stories with me. Many thank yous to my sponsors, the Loca Tango Project and the Milonga Café Pacifico, as well as my collaborator, Tango Sin Fin. And finally, thank you so much to my subscribers and viewers for helping this channel grow. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next time.